you know, I, I tell everyone, don't believe, you know, the only person that's going to make it happen, no boot camp, no, no degree is going to make it happen for you. You have to make it happen. And he was, he was a great example of that. Yeah. <laughs> to do apps. Uh, and then you're like, okay, well, what is your side project? Like, these are projects that you aren't really side projects. These are things where you like, Hey, I wanted to learn react. So I built something and that's great. Cause you have to do that to build your own bigger project. Your, and this doesn't even have to be, doesn't have to even have to be you writing code. My best side project has always been my YouTube channel. I don't, all right, we are recording. Today I have on Dylan Israel. He is a YouTuber, computer scientist, and instructor. And he's now in the process actually of getting ready for some of the interviews at the top world's top tech companies. So we're going to talk about that. But Dylan, thank you for coming on today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Definitely. So it's pretty exciting that you're actually in the middle of doing this practicing for some of these interviews. You mentioned you have a product you release, which is, you said it's a hundred algorithms, right? Yes. Yeah, so I call it the 100 algorithm challenge because um, very few people finish courses in general, even less are going to finish this course. Uh, but I think at the end yeah. of it, you'll, you'll appreciate it because, you know, technical interviews are something that happens for everybody. Um, and, you know, any good job for the most part is going to have a technical interview. So at the very least, uh, you'll have a hundred things that you can practice and sort of see how I solve it and, you know, continue building maybe a little portfolio item with your algorithms. Nice. Nice. And you said you spent, so this is a hundred algorithms solved. People can walk through and learn. You spent three months on this, but you're selling it for $10. Why are you giving this away to your, to your audience? So uh, I mean, at the end of the day, um, I use, so I, I'm a big believer of you know, filling in my own gaps and then sharing that. Right. So I enjoy the journey. I enjoy learning and making money on top of it is all, you know, that's just, that's just extra. Right. So yeah. um, any good developer should be learning outside of work. And if you can monetize that learning, that's great. Yeah, totally makes sense. So we might've stole the thunder from this question, but I usually like to ask people, this might be the same thing, but what, what are you working on right now that you're most excited about? And why is that? If it's interviewing, that's okay. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's always been my YouTube channel. Um, it has yeah. been my most consistent project. And consistency is really the key to success at the end of the day. It's just consistently working towards your goal every single day. And YouTube has provided me with such a interesting path to continue learning while still having fun. And that, that's sort of been my key. Um, outside of that, I, I'm preparing for some interviews and that's exciting. Um, just sort of the companies that I've been talking with and, and interviewing with. And, um, you know, it's never exciting to get those rejection letters that happen sometimes when you, <laughs> when you interview, but it's yeah. always exciting. The promise of you know, new, new opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so I was actually a little surprised. So before the call, we were talking a little bit about some of the experiences Dylan has had. And you mentioned, I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear how many of the interviews were like this, but you mentioned one of the interviews where they flew you out and had four two hour sessions. In one oh, of the, the final interview stages. Yeah. They're going to be flying me out for that one. Um, okay. next week. Uh, so from what I've been told by the hiring manager, um, but it's, it's a fairly common thing, even like the remote interviews I've done. So I'm on the East coast. I'm interviewing, uh, specifically in on the West coast in Seattle, sometimes Portland, but, um, it's fairly common for the, the larger companies to, hey, have you on site. They want to, you know, usually about two or three of those um, interviews are technical with one. And the whole time is sort of also a filling out process. So like midday, you'll go to lunch. After the fact, you know, you'll, you'll usually you'll end it with, you know, some big wig uh, or your hiring manager kind of, find, you know, talking with you. And the whole time, the team that you're being interviewed for is sort of they're going through the algorithm scene if they can work with you, right? Cause it's not only about the technical skills. It's I have to work with this guy or girl every single day. Yeah. Am I going to have to quit this job? Cause I don't want to work <laughs> with this guy. Right. So it's, yeah. it's a very long and tiring process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Making sure your culture fit. That's mm, nice. Yeah. Something people don't put as much emphasis on as they should. Um, you know, the whole communication culture fit thing, um, if you're awful to be around and an excellent developer, excellent, any job, you're, you're never going to get a job. <laughs> that's hilarious, but true. Um, that's interesting. So going back, 
uh, I saw you were not always a developer, so things have changed. What made you decide to become a developer? Uh, your self thought, what made you decide to, to go through that? Yeah. So, um, God, maybe seven years back I was, um, I started, I, I, you know, finished my general ed and I was going into a computer science bachelor's degree program and sort of how that started was really at the end of the day, I said, what, what has, what has good money and what has jobs and what has good job growth. And it sort of led me just by looking at some, you know, Bureau of Labor of Science and stats. It led me down to, okay, you know what? The computer science degree is the best degree or one of the best. And I, I went into it, spent about four years sort of dicking around in it. Um, and <laughs> and uh, I, I loved coding, and, uh, but I, I couldn't, you know, by the end of my junior year, I just couldn't. I couldn't go on. Uh, it was miserable. I hated it. And so I devised a plan to, to drop out and, you know, get my first job. And so the plan was always to be a developer. Um, but I sort of took a untraditional path, I guess, or I, I, I mean, I, is dropping out of college an untraditional path anymore? I feel like I don't it's, know. it's Maybe. A, a common path. Um, I yeah. just happened to be, I guess, successful in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wait, when you dropped out, did you immediately get a developer job or what happened? So the way that I sort of devised this plan, because I, I would never encourage anyone just to do something, you know, like, oh my God, I can't take it. And then the next day you drop out and then you're like, oh, well, I have no options. This is really unfortunate. And yeah. so I, um, I knew I wanted to drop out. I continued going to school and then I, I took a semester off to go and do a, it's a quarter actually, a quarter off to go and do a, a web dev um, internship, which they hired me to do like contract work. And from there, I got hired at a student information system company. I was, and this was when I dropped out where I was doing sort of a business analyst slash technical writer role. I still wasn't a developer, but I was working with devs and I was still learning and, and growing outside of, outside of work. Mm -hmm. And about nine months in, I got my first dev job at a, another company. Oh, wow. That's pretty quick then. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, I was studying every day before work, after work on the weekends. Um, you know, I would have like, um, Matt Tran and engineer truth over. He was, when he was preparing for his dev mountain coding boot camp. we'd be doing like mm -hmm. algorithms on the whiteboards, going to meetups, doing all the stuff you should be doing. That's intense. Um, uh, must've been fun though. Uh, so yeah, you've had a bunch of jobs now. Are there any in particular you say you've learned the most from or more beneficial to your career than others and why is that um so i've had i guess three relevant jobs and internship okay and my most current role is the one i learned the the most and this just has to do with working in a larger corporate environment where you get accustomed to because depending on what sort of software team you're on you know if you're at a web you know tiny web design shop it's going to be different than working for you know a giant like microsoft if you're on a five man entire web dev department, it's going to be different than working on a 40 man team uh, like I currently am. And so I've learned quite a bit uh, partially because I have a, I have an excellent tech lead who has, you know, some of the hardest parts about evolving as a developer is knowing what to learn and how to learn. And so when you've had these great resources around you that say, Hey, you know what you should check out, check out this book. And, you know, you know what processes we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about test-driven development, what that means, and how we can really level up our code and, and get you from being somebody who sort of writes hobby code to being a professional developer. And I, I really uh, attribute the, the team that I've been working with currently in that fashion. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say it's hard when, you know, it's a junior dev because you're kind of fighting for yourself to get all the right skills put together. How, is there any way that people can look for the, those jobs where they're getting put on teams where they're going to get mentorship? Is there any way to tell beforehand which teams are going to be like that? Um, so if you're looking for somebody to mentor, be prepared to be, uh, or to be mentored by, be prepared to be disappointed most of the time. Um, yeah. You're going to need to have the mindset of, I am here to learn. I'm going to absorb as much as I can inside and outside of work. So in, in my particular instance, um, you know, uh, test driven development. It's not something that I was super familiar with. I start reading up about it and now I'm in a workplace where I can implement those skills. But if I don't force myself to go gain those skills and practice them at work, I, I never evolve. 
when I do code reviews, I, when I first started out, I would love to, and code, for people who aren't familiar with code reviews, essentially you have other developers review your code and they, you know, you review their code. I would review as many, as many bits of code as I could so I could see better examples so that I could learn from better examples and push as many bits of code out as I could so that I could get the feedback to say, hey, why don't you do it this way? Or hey, here's a better way of doing it and learn through that and just being challenged. And so as you continue to challenge yourself and you continue to accept constructive criticism, because if you're, if you're freaking out because someone's saying, you know, something bad about your code, they're not going to tell you how to make it better next time. And so yeah. you really have to have that mentality and sort of find ways to get the mentoring or get the guidance. And really all it is, is, Hey, this is the direction we think you should go. And this is why no one's going to hold your hand along the way. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Um, it just seems like it's a part-time job trying to get yourself all the extra skills you need while you're trying to tread water at that first job. Um, yeah, mo most jobs will give you about three months to get up and running, um, you know, um, for a junior role or even a senior role because it's every environment's different. Typically, you're not going to go into a place and have 100% of what they want. You might have 70%. And you're going to have to get accustomed with their code base and their environment and everything else that goes along, you're going to be doing HR crap for the first two weeks. And, you know, yeah. every, every time you try to, you know, do an NPM install, you might have to get credentials and, you know, it's, it's, it's a hectic couple months, but mm -hmm. it's up to you at work and outside of work to make sure that that ramp up period is as minimal as possible. Yeah. So I know that you do a lot of tutorials and helping other people that are learning to code. I guess a little more broad question though is what, what skills in general do you think in tech are good to learn? I mean, this can be different types of software engineering or it can be just different jobs in tech, but what do you think are the most valuable skills now? I guess it's June or July now, 2018. Um, I mean, as, as crazy as it sounds, soft skills are probably the most, um, you know, ride or die skills in, in terms <laughs> of like, that. yeah. Cause like you are, if you really think about it, you're competing against everybody else who also knows how to code. Uh, so it's, it's like there are skills that are in more in demand than others, but when especially specifically for junior level roles, you need to be able to have the soft skills that they're looking for. You need to be eager. You need to be able to prove that you're actively learning and that you're actively coding. Right. Um, in terms of skills that are very in demand that sort of are still developing a lot. There's a lot of DevOps roles that are, that need to be filled. Uh, and, and part of it is a sort of a new niche in software. Um, and it's one of the items where it's the path to getting there is kind of unique. It's, it's, it's a mixture of code. It's sort of a mixture of hardware and maintaining servers and, and items like that. And, you know, deployments and it's a, it's a, it's a different path than a lot of developers traditionally have done. You know, a lot of these guys are people who used to tinker on servers and, and, you know, do hardware and sort of had this natural evolution. Well, as things have gone to the cloud, those guys have slowly stopped existing and kind of migrated into DevOps. In terms of the front end, um, I was just looking at a hacker rank report where they, they had like the most in-demand skills. And um, it's about, in terms of React, the amount of jobs in React is in total less than Angular, but it, it feels like much greater if you were to look at the job market. And the part of the reason for that is that the gap of amount of React developers for the amount of React jobs is much larger, which is the more important thing to look at if you're trying to get your entry level you know, role is don't necessarily worry about the total amount of jobs. You know, that's, that's an important stat, but it's not the only stat. Look at where is the biggest gap for, you know, medium to large size demands? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Splitting it up that way instead of just total amount of jobs. And so you think React right now is like, if you're going to get into development, that's everyone should be focusing on that. Uh, if, you, if you're going into front end, right? So there's so many different aspects of development. Um, there is back end, there's front end, there's DevOps, there's UI UX. Um, I, I'm a front end developer. So that's, that's the little thing that I, I get hit up about all the time. Angular React, Angular React. It's just like, yeah, just learn them both, man. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it is kind of interesting because when you hear people just getting into it, trying to pick what to learn and then, 
you know, seeing like a senior developer that just has like everything listed on their resume, it's pretty intimidating. It, it feels like that. And it's, it's a natural sort of thing. And if I was to look at my resume um, today from what it was two and a half, three years ago, I would look at that and be like, oh my God, how am I ever going to get there? Right. Yeah. But um, you know, that, that's because you're just getting going, right? You're just getting started and you're typically learning outside of work or before work. But when you're now a dedicated professional spending 40 plus hours a week, and then sometimes, you know, hours outside of work, those skills that you're using on a daily basis ramp up very quickly. And so your, your resume becomes a very powerful thing in terms of like viewing it from like, Oh my God, how will I ever get there to like, Oh, I have this. And then you go that next year, like, Oh my goodness, how will I actually get there? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The challenges definitely become uh, more difficult. Uh, <laughs> So, okay. I kind of want to shift gears a little bit because I know you have a ton of amazing stuff on development on your channel, but I wanted to talk a little bit about why you started your channel and like what was going on in your life when you decided, you know, what, I'm going to start throwing up my knowledge online, make this YouTube thing work. Yeah. So, um, I started my channel a little over three years ago and I started it for kind of two reasons. One, um, my buddy, uh, Engineer Truth, uh, Matt Tran, he had his channel. I think he was making like $600 a month at the time. And it was like, wow, I could use $600 a month. And so I kind of started a, a YouTube channel. And I, at that point, it was more so about learning. And if money came, it was great. And so one of the things that I encourage a lot of people to do is just, you know, just start throwing videos up. It's, it's not going to hurt you. And a lot of people are, are, are scared and I found it an excellent learning resource and kind of is one of the reasons I've, I've been able to, to get jobs. I got my first job because of it because they wanted someone who's passionate about software while also could do some technical documentation and video editing and, you know, gather requirements. And they were able to see, okay, this guy has at least some passion and he can edit some stuff and do some documentation. But for me, it was sort of a, hey, it's a great way to practice. It's a, a great way to create a cool portfolio item. You know, I have this video portfolio and then it's a cool way if, you know, if it makes me some money and I, I didn't make a ton of money in my, my first year on it at the end of one year in 350 sort of videos of just doing like online tutorials, I made $70 a month, not like <laughs> a ridiculous amount, but it was yeah. never about that. It was about, Hey, here's a, I'm going to do these tutorials and then I'm going to film myself going through it again because you know, in the moment, it feels like you're learning something, but when you have to go through it again, you're in, you know, and you have to teach somebody else, right? You have to narrate your actions. It's very easy for your brain to make jumps and like, oh, I get it. But then you have to talk yourself through it and what it means. Mm -hmm. And then you find out very quickly that you don't really understand any of it. And so you have to keep, <laughs> keep doing it until it all yeah. makes sense. So that's, that's sort of how I, I started the channel. Yeah, that's a long process. And you said you put out 350 videos in your first year. Mm -hmm. My, that's my goal my goal was to pretty much do everything on code Academy and like free code camp at the time when I started. And I, I basically ran out of stuff on code Academy. So pretty much every section on there, it didn't matter the language I was doing Ruby, JavaScript, Python, whatever else I have on there. And it was just about sort of reprogramming my brain to think like a developer. Cause uh, the fundamentals of any programming language are going to be very similar. You know, you're going to, you're going to have some control flow. You're going to have variable data types, you know, you're going to have lists, arrays, objects, all that sort of stuff. And then it's just about, uh, you know, how this one language does it from the other on a, on a very simplistic way. And for me, it was like, okay, I'm just going to work through this stuff. And um, more and more I work through it, I'll start picking up those fundamentals. I start sort of reprogramming my brain on how to think and how to problem solve in the way that's good for software. And um, I was doing it as much as I could. It was my, the only thing I, you know, I, I, threw out all my game systems, got rid of my TV, deleted League of Legends, all that crap. And I just, that was the only thing I did. Wow. That's impressive. Cause that's, a, that's, that's a high output. That's awesome. So your audience now, who would you say is your audience, like average audience member? Do you have any crazy success stories from them? Um, I would say my average audience member is aspiring junior developers or recently hired junior developers. I get a lot of emails all the time and you know, I've, I've connected and it's sort of a natural progression. It's like some of your more long-term subscribers that you've chatted with, you start, you know, having one-on-one -on -one messages with, you're shooting emails and it's always great to hear about how they succeed. So I do a lot of live streams and 
pretty much every live stream, you know, I have someone that pops in just real quick. Say, Hey man, I got my first dev job. I just want to thank you. You know, it kept me awesome. motivated. Um, and you know, it kept me, you kept it interesting and fun and you know, I never gave up, you know, and I'm, I've been sponsored by several boot camps and stuff like that. And you know, some, uh, I just interviewed somebody the other day about, you know, I interviewed, this was kind of the, the guy, um, his name is James Scott. And I've, I've always really liked James. He's been a long time subscriber. And I interviewed him. He's like, he, he emailed me, God, maybe a year ago. And he said, Hey man, I'm going to go to Dev Mountain. Um, and I appreciate you introducing me. I'd like, you want to interview me and we can talk about, it. so I interviewed him at the start of the boot camp about a week yeah. in and talked about what he did to prep. Fast forward a year later, I'm interviewing him about how he got his first dev job after the boot camp, and how he's been successful in it. And so it's a really cool thing because it's like we got to see it full circle, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I tell everyone don't believe, you know, the only person that's going to make it happen, no boot camp, no, no degree is going to make it happen for you. You have to make it happen. And he was, mm -hmm. he was a great example of that. Wow. That is, that is cool to be able to track that whole progression. And how is he doing? Like, how is he, how is he adjusting to that? That's been my nice thought shift in a year. Yeah, he's, he's loving it. So, um, he is, you know, he was in, uh, in Florida and he's now living with his girlfriend in Chicago working uh, in like downtown Chicago. He says he's loving the food and he's loving his first job. And it's a, it's a real relaxed environment. Um, you know, casual wear and he's just l loving every aspect, every bit of it. So it's, 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 I, it's all, it's always fun to say, Hey man, do you love it as much as you think you do? You would. And it's like, yes, even more so. So it's, it's nice to see. It's awesome. Yeah. That's so crazy when it works out like that. Man, that's great. That's great. Um, so do you work on any, this is like totally unrelated. Do you work on any open source projects? Do you recommend people work on them? Why or why not? What do you think is good or bad about them? So this is like one of those things where, <laughs> that's where, response, man. Like, yeah, where, uh, I probably have a different opinion than most people about open source. So I've heard so polarized both sides. It's an, it's excellent because you get to, you get exposed to a lot of the processes that you would in, in a work environment. You're going to get, you know, pull requests and code reviews and things like that. And you're going to be forced to work in a code base that isn't your own. Um, it's also very hard for a lot of people to get going in that aspect. It's, yeah. it's good for your resume. It's good for that. But the, my, my argument to all that is just start a personal project is, if you're going to spend your time working on open source, why don't you just build something open source of your own and have people work on your project, have people work on your code. Um, you know, it's not always that easy. I just think, I think the ramp up time for a lot of people to get to that point where they feel comfortable is, is a little bit hard. And there, there are tools out there to say, Hey, here are some beginner open source stuff. Um, I've, I've done a little bit, you know, with uh, the free code camp, um, page and, and stuff like that, where I've been like, okay, let me go ahead and fix this bug fix real quick, where it's like a, mm -hmm. a minor thing. Yeah. Um, you know, so many bug tickets, but for the most part, I, 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 instead of focusing on someone else's project, I encourage people to focus on their own. Yeah. No, that totally, that totally makes sense. It's like you're working on someone else's pro problem. It's completely unpaid. You're just not <laughs> really on it. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's all about you learning and, you know, building a portfolio and at the end of it, when you finish that prod project or you finish that product, you'll have something that you're more motivated to work on because the end result will have a reward. It's, you know, it's not, you're going to, you're not only going to learn, but Hey, maybe you'll make some money. And even if you don't, at least it's yours and you can be proud of it. That's not to say you can't be proud of working on open source, but I think there's some pride that comes along with building your own project. And if you want people to work on that with you, you'll learn a lot more in a different way than working on someone else's open source project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so maybe trying to make something that's like your own your own application your own widget your own little product or project you know depending on how much skill you have yeah you'd, you'd be surprised how many people don't have a single unique side project of any type um where you'll they'll have they'll have calculators they'll have <laughs> they'll have <laughs> like uh they'll have weather yeah, yeah. apps you know yeah. uh and temperature um, converters <laughs> yeah to do apps <laughs> Uh, and then you're like, okay, well, what is your side project? Like, these are projects that you aren't really side projects. These are things where you're like, hey, I wanted to learn React. So I built something. And that's great because you have to do that to build your own bigger project. You're, and this doesn't even have to be, doesn't have to even have to be you writing code. My best side project 
has always been my YouTube channel. I don't, I, you know, and I do write code in a, in a, in a version, but you could do a blog, you do a podcast, you could do, you know, a ton of different things talking, you know, it just, you just go to meetups, record yourself, go, you know, giving speeches. It doesn't yeah. really matter. It's all about, you know, it doesn't have to be you actually typing on a keyboard, but so few people ever do anything like that. And that's that if you, if you do, um, you, you can be very successful, but the same people who work on open source typically have the willpower to do something like that. So it's kind of like, <laughs> you're going to be successful no matter what you do, really, as long as you do something. Yeah. As long, as long as you make something valuable. So we talked about this a little bit. Uh, you know, you mentioned you wanted to keep working on your channel, not worry about the side, the side projects, you know, in terms of products too much, but do you have any entrepreneurial projects you're thinking about in the future? Or you already know you're going to, you're going to take on later in time. I've had an idea for something. Um, and I, I'm getting, I, I'm probably within the next six months to a year, I will actually start working on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, are you, are you familiar with loot crate at all? Loot crate? Yeah. I don't think I am. No. So Loot Crate is a subscription box where it's like 12, 15 or $20 a month. They have a bunch of different ones. And every month they send you a, a random box of like a t-shirt and some gaming gear. Oh, that's like, like one of these box. That's like a whole yeah. type of company. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. So for a, quite some time, I've, I've had this idea for a code crate where every month mm -hmm. I send you a shirt, I send you maybe some flashcards, I send you some courses, mm -hmm. maybe a video or a book. And it's like 20, $25 a month. And it essentially is, you know, some cool coding swag and, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, some educational materials. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I've sort of looked into in the past and I, I'm, I'm waiting for some things in my life to settle. And then I think I might dive into that. Um, that, that might be, be something that I, I would have a lot of fun with. And I think I could be successful with the hardest part when looking into it wasn't necessarily getting the stuff made. It was more so um, getting uh, the shipping handled. That was so oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you'd have to get all the items and then package them together. I think they have a company that does that. Don't they have a couple that do that? Yeah. Yeah. So this would, um, for what I would want to do, I'd probably uh, do it myself just kind of okay. um, handle it. And I was looking into like the U S postal service has certain boxes. That if it, you know, it's below weight and a certain size mm -hmm. is a flat rate. Um, but then you can't ship to international. And so uh, I have to, I have to more. So the, the, yeah. I have to work out the logistics of it, but it's something that I will probably be spending three to six months of planning in the next three to six months. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> test those operations, Charles. Yeah. Uh, so would this be something for people learning like new, new people that are learning code or just like people that are already into it just for fun? I think it would be both. Um, that's, that's sort of where the, these, you know, the cool, like, you get a shirt, you know, like I got an am all my shirts are like dev shirts or gaming shirts. Um, you know, you could get a poster every, every month you're going to get, you know, um, you know, like a course or two so that like, Hey, you know, this theme is JavaScript and we sent you, you know, some JavaScript stickers and pins and, and a shirt and, and maybe some flashcards going over some methods and a cheat sheet and, and some courses. So it kind of, my, my vision for it would be more so a, um, there's educational aspects of it as well as just, you know, cool, cool swag to go with it. Nice. Nice. So like a little bit of both. That's cool. That's super unique, man. Everyone just makes courses. That's I like, that's pretty cool. I just, every, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the YouTubers, it's only just digital courses, not affiliate offers. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. It's cause it's, it's easy, right? It's easy for, and it's low risk, right? So for you to do affiliate, what do you got to do? You got to throw a link up and you got to take out <laughs> 30 seconds of your video for your yeah. course. You have to devote the time, but once it's done, you know, someone's just, it, there's no investment to start something like this. It's going to cost five, $10,000 uh, up front and then time and energy and consist and continual time and energy. Um, you're taking, you're taking a larger risk than, um, than maybe all the other easier paths. Not to say yeah. I don't do those easier paths because I do, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it is, uh, you know, it's hundred percent. Yeah. Oh man. That'd be cool though. If you got that set up, I bet a ton of other YouTubers would jump on that. If you had an affiliate program for like a dev box. That's yeah. That, that, that would be the, the idea of, Hey, you know, 
can get your cut and get to yeah. go sign up, right? I set but, all this up. like yeah. yeah, but you're just on the other side of it, right? So you go and instead of being the person who's getting the affiliate links, you're paying it out because they're bringing it in, right? Mm-hmm. So Yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. I mean, that'd be super cool. There's so many big channels for development too. Um, so besides your channel, what other resources, you know, books, blogs, courses, mentors, would you recommend for people getting into development? So it kind of depends on where you're at in your, your dev journey, whether you're okay. just start getting started, whether you're a junior developer, senior developer, really depends. There's a couple of great YouTube channels I'd recommend. Um, Coding Tech is one that I really enjoy. They basically have a ton of different talks that they have on there from from conferences. You know, two to three talks come out every other day. They, they have a ton of videos. Um, Traversy Media does tutorials on pretty much everything. It's an excellent resource, even though he basically said my video was crap the other day, but I forgive him. <laughs> forgive you, Wait, Brad. Is it Traversy Media? <laughs> yeah, Traversy Media. Uh, Wait, what did he say? What he's just like that guy's uh, stuff is like. Yeah. No, uh, no, no. I I, uh, I made a video about how we need to stop using Bootstrap, and then he he oh, released okay. he released a video saying we need to stop um, tech shaming people or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you need to keep your, your ass quiet about these frameworks. Wait, Bootstrap? That's a Rails framework, right? Uh, no. Uh, so Bootstrap is. Uh, I mean, there may be something called Bootstrap in Rails, but um, this is a UI framework where. They basically build a bunch of CSS components for you. Oh, okay, okay. A lot of people okay. use it for responsive design, even though it's not needed in my opinion, but uh, kind, mm. kind of getting off track here. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's my ignorance. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Let's take it off. Let's uh, take it off. Um, so yeah, yeah. So there, there's a lot of great books, um, depending on what you're, you're trying to get started. That's something that I've started integrating in, in my, in my uh, this year of learning. I try to switch it up every year. So um, for the coding interviews, cracking the coding interview is probably the number one resource. Okay. It's a very dry book. It's very um, complicated. Um, be prepared to be bored. Um, it's a hard book to work through. I haven't worked through it completely. Um, okay. There is um, the complete, if you're just looking like, hey, what is this world like? The Complete Software Developer's Career Guide by John Sonmez is a very entry level approach to, you know, 700 pages long, but it's an easy read. And it's, kind of gives you like an introduction section to like 70 topics is how I'd explain it. And yeah. it doesn't go detailed into stuff in terms of upping your coding game. The book I'm reading right now, I'm on my last chapter or two is, uh, and it's sort of been the inspiration for a series, which is um, that I've started called code like a pro where I'm essentially mm-hmm. teaching you how can we write better software? How can we write better code? How can we write clean and maintainable code? And it's um, called clean code. Uh, and that's by, um, he goes by Uncle Bob, uh, but uh, Robert Martin. Uh, okay. So those are some some good books to get you going. But really, more than anything else, I would I would encourage people just to code and just to go to meetups and start start seeing what's out there because you have you know people who are spending their time and energy teach you things and you you have the chance to get that feedback and bounce off them, which is uh, more valuable than any any you know video or book or course you're gonna get. Yeah, totally, totally. And do you are there any any of the coding boot camps you recommend over the others? Like, do you have like a top two, top three, anything like that? I definitely recommend the ones that sponsor me. Uh, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which ones are those? Uh, so I, I'm, I'm sponsored by Dev Mountain. Uh, so just in all fairness, um, I don't want people to think I'm uh, shilling here, but uh, I've actually gone to Dev Mountain's campus in Provo, Utah, and it was, it was a very nice campus. And one of the unique things about them, I think this is, um, a testament to how important this is they provide housing with their tuition. And so like you can get up and you know, the money you're going to spend on the boot camp you're going to save a little on rent, but more so it's about being totally immersed in it and being in a, in a, in a house or an apartment with other people who are in the program with you in your cohort. And mm-hmm. you get that sort of dorm room experience where like you're all in it together and we're going to, we're going to help each other out. And I think that's part of the boot camp. Um, part of the bootcamp success is you're able to, you really have to put like 80 hours a week into these things and, and you need to be prepared for that. And if you go in there sort of half ass and about, I would say about half bootcamp people do, because anytime people are putting in hard work, there's a bunch of people looking for an an easy meal ticket. And so um, it's, I, it's one of the cooler aspects uh, of dead mountain. Wow. 
Yeah, that's intense. That's 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 like eighty hours a week for what is it, twelve weeks? Or? Uh, I believe it's twelve or fourteen weeks, and then they have like two weeks of prep. And if you are interested in a boot camp, I do recommend you study about three to six months because really, what you want to do get out of a boot camp is you don't want to learn to code, um, but you want to say, okay, I know how to code. Now, how can I code professionally? How can I set these skills up? Because if you start off at level five, you can get to level ten, and uh, you know if if you start off at level zero, you might get to level four or three and never, you know, never ramp up to, cause you want, I mean, the goal for a boot camp is to be job ready really at the end of it. And mm-hmm. the more prepared you are for the boot camp, the more you can progress, the more you can learn and the more you can go and, and become job ready. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, we covered a lot of topics. The, the last question I have is just, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have, or you'd like to tell people? Yeah. Um, code every day until you have a job. <laughs> so I say this, I say this all the yeah. time and people think I'm joking. No, yeah. if your objective is to become a developer every day, don't care if it takes you four years, it's not going to, but if you code every day until you have a job, that's the message I want people to take away is that, Every day you have the opportunity to progress your, your software skills. That doesn't mean, you know, when you get frustrated on algorithms, start a project. When you get frustrated on project, go to algorithms. When you get frustrated with both, go to a meetup. When you get frustrated at that, watch a, watch a course video or what, go on YouTube and, uh, you know, read a blog. Find out what's going on, the Reddit programming stuff. Every day you have the opportunity to be one step closer to becoming a better developer, becoming a developer. So code every day until you have a job. When you get a job, um, you'll just code out of practice. So that, that would be what I would like to leave people with is that consistency and in whatever you want to be successful with, in this case, it's software for me, work towards it every day uh, for yourself and enjoy the process and keep it fun and you'll, you'll be successful in whatever you try to do. Mm, nice. That's a good one. Well, Dylan, I'm going to cut this and we can chat after, but thank you for coming on to give people your advice. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.